What's the word, y'all? The Toronto Raptors lost again. They are 13 and 18. If I'm not mistaken, they're on a six game losing streak after losing to the 76ers in Philly today. And I'll be honest with you, man, I'm extremely disappointed in them through the first 30 or so games of the season. If you go back and watch my Eastern Conference prediction video, I predicted that they were going to be a 4-5 seed out East because I was a firm believer in a few things. I thought that their defense was going to continue to be elite with them running the lineup where everybody's 6-7 and above other than Fred Van Vliet. They're going to cause a lot of turnovers and get out on the break. I knew that Pascal Siakam was going to be able to build on his All-NBA season last year. I thought that Scotty Barnes was going to be taking a sophomore year jump. I think he was going to be an All-Star, All-NBA player, but I thought he'd be more productive in the sophomore season versus rookie season. And I thought that the the lack of production for Fred Van Vliet in the second half of the season was more of a showcase of lingering issues that he was playing through uh, instead of it being actually him. And well, out of everything I just said that made me confident in the Toronto Raptors, only one thing is really true, and that's that Pascal Siakam is great. Pascal today, 38, 15 rebounds, 6 assists. A very, very great game. I'm watching this game the entire time. I'm thinking, is anybody gonna help? Fred Van Vliet ended, ended with nine points, six rebounds, three assists, and jacked up a lot of shots. And, and you know what? They were all good looks, especially if we got to late fourth quarter and overtime or whatever. All good looks, but they were not falling. And I know they end up losing this game, but it's hard to say this wasn't a bad loss considering they were up. But y'all played, in my opinion, solid basketball for 40 minutes it just so happened those last eight minutes plus overtime, it wasn't that great. So let's let's do the silver lining thing before we start talking about the, the struggles of the season. And this one specifically, the defense looked way better today than it had looked over the last couple weeks. And that's a bright side when you're playing against Joel and B, James Harden, a lot of different weapons. Um, the defense is good. I just don't love the amount of open corner threes that were given up this game. And sh again, shout out to Tobias Harris, bro. He was he was amazing. I mean, he should have had th four more points, but they took away one because P.J. Tucker set an illegal screen. Regardless, Tobias Harris over the last, let's say, five or six games or so has been looking really, really good. And I'm, I'm happy for him in the 76ers because they, they low-key been very under the radar. And we eventually get to some 76ers talk um, in a little bit. But let's talk about those other things that I, I was wrong about. The defense so far this season is if we exclude the 40 minutes today. But it, it has been lackluster compared to what we're used to for the Toronto Raptors. Well, Kenny, we were missing OG. People missed this and that. Every team in basketball is dealing with injury histories or uh, injury issues. So I understand it, but I don't at the same time. For example, the game against the Warriors, was that last night, two nights ago? I, you know what? Actually, let's not even talk about it. It was just bad. And Scotty hasn't had the same impact this season as we saw his rookie season. I know it's, a, it's very memeable and everybody's talking about Scotty versus this player, Scotty versus this young player. Oh, they didn't trade Scotty Barnes for Kevin Durant. I still believe that Scotty is going to end up being a stud. But right now, when I watch him play, he feels passive for some reason. Last year, I didn't get that feeling. Last year, I didn't feel like that he was afraid to put the ball on the floor or afraid to go to the basket, even if that resulted in a bad shot at him, or afraid to take a jump shot. So far, it feels like he is being just out there which is not good for a guy that you believe to be a super cornerstone of your organization for Van Vliet I, I mean the last couple games see I think he had a 37 point game a 37 point game but then tonight he had this big old stinker he, he's just just an inefficient shooter at the end of the day inefficient score I mean in those actually in those other two games he was getting to the basket which is dope um, he's a small guy. Him getting to the basket opens up the offense for a lot of different people. And this one, he couldn't really do that because the 76ers have a bunch of like hard-nosed big defenders, whether it be Joel Embiid at the rim or P.J. Tucker on some help or Tobias Harris. They have a lot of people that can go out there and defend, so he didn't really have the opportunity to get to the basket at all tonight. There's, there's a lot to be desired for Fred Van Vliet so far this season. I'll just say that. So because Freddie is struggling to shoot the ball, and because uh, Scotty isn't a plus shooter just yet, oh, even though his catch and shoot percentage last time I checked was pretty good, overall, they just don't have any shooting on the team. Like any. I think they were 29th in basketball behind the Chicago Bulls, of course, when it came to three-point production this season. Uh, it's not good. That's not good. We're in 2022 going to 2023. You have to be able to shoot the three-point shot to be a successful team. This is a team that doesn't do that. Half-court offense is just bad. It's like if Pascal can't bail us out, we don't really know what we're doing. And if they aren't causing many turnovers and they're not having great defenses, it's, it's a lot to be desired for the Toronto Raptors. So what is what do they have to do? I don't know. I don't I know there's a lot of conversations about if they should make trades and this or that. This is this is my take on it as an outsider looking at Toronto Raptors. I don't know what pieces should be safe or pieces should be shipped out, but what I will say. 
if you're gonna have a guy like Pascal Saka be on on your team, you have to do right by him and build a roster that's good. Because the version of Pascal Siakam we are getting right now is top 15. So if we have a top 15 player that we're not going to sell, I don't know if they will, but if, let's assume that they're not going to sell Pascal. We have to put a team around him that's good to his strengths and also help him out. Because right now they're doing him a disservice. I don't know what that looks like, but I will say I do trust the front office over there. They have a track record of being good and making these tough decisions, and they have one coming up for sure. Let's get to some of the other games of the day. The Atlanta Hawks beat the hot Orlando Magic. Shout out to Orlando. They get, they made this a game. behind had Markel Fultz, a little scoop layup, um, the foul, obviously, and then DeJounte closed it out, hitting the free throws. His only free throws of the game. The bright side for this for the Atlanta Hawks is the last couple games, Trey Young has looked more like himself than the first 20 or so, where he ended up at 37 and, and 13, which is a crazy stat line. But deeper than that, he shot it officially. And me and the guys were talking about it on our podcast recently about the Trey Young struggle of shooting and how we didn't really understand it and that we knew he'll eventually get there. But at that point, he had only had like two games in a season where he has shot over 45%. Now, it was a little while ago, but he has shot over 45% from the field. That's not good for Trey Young. And the last couple, he's been efficient. That he he he's been helping them win. And I don't know if this is the turn. I don't. I really don't know. Um, but they beat a scorching hot team, and they should be uh, be happy about that. I'm sure the Mavs will get their video eventually. But let, we we spent five ish minutes on the Toronto Raptors and their struggles. I want to go the opposite direction and start shining some light on the team like the Minnesota Timberwolves, because they're without Carthen Towns. Rudy Gobert went out with an injury. Um, Kyle Anderson didn't play today. Who, who else didn't play? The list goes on and on and on, and they beat the Dallas Mavericks. Don't ask me to talk about the officiating or whatever. I'm not here to do that. Um, they beat the Dallas Mavericks behind Anthony Edwards, and, and I'm very close to making an Anthony Edwards-centric video about the last week or so of basketball for him. Because if you remember when we were talking about the Rudy Gobert trade or just Anthony Edwards in general, one of the main things I said on this channel is that what's going to make Anthony Edwards a threat deeper than just what he is right now will be his ability to play make. Through the first 20 or so games, he was kind of used as an offensive go get us a bucket and not much more. He was running some pick and roll Rudy Gobert, but he never really passed the ball as more shots. These last couple days, games, bro has been out there playmaking like it hit a whole nother level. It has hit a whole nother level. Listen, I got to see it firsthand when he went against my Chicago Bulls, goddamn. But like today, a nine assist, one turnover game for Anthony Edwards is something that they got to make a plaque for. Because that was not something a lot of people saw coming. So his playmaking opens up the game more to like now he can go out there and get his own when he needs to. And in his postgame interview, I think it was yesterday or whatever it was against the Bulls, uh, he was talking about how recently him and D'Angelo Russell have kind of shared the point guard position and he said it's opened up his eyes more because now he's not necessarily focused on just taking shots because he ain't touched the ball recently it's like I can create for others and if we could keep that mindset for Anthony Edwards once everything gets going and everybody comes back it could be a scary sight for a lot of people will he be able to do this when everybody's back is the big question but this these are quality quality wins where we watch Anthony Edwards develop and these are the type of wins you need when we're talking about a young guy that you bought into by making the Rudy Gobert trade you bought into him because you gave up the future because this is your future you know so I'm really excited and happy for Ant uh because this game was elite and Nas Reed he's he, he gets buried obviously because Rudy and Carmen Towns he's too damn good to not be getting like real real like good minutes and it scares me because I think Nas might end up getting dealt because they have too much depth there Maybe I'm crazy, but I guess we'll see once we get closer to it. He's one of the things on this roster that has current value now. Um, and I think there'll be a team that's be that will be willing to buy a little bit. Austin Rivers also is on a non-guaranteed contract. He has 16 points and five rebounds, and this defense has been good. So shout out to him. Congratulations to Damian Lillard, who passed Clyde Drexler on the all-time um record for the Portland Trailblazer points. Really proud of him for that. Mommy got taken away a little bit though. Cause cause Shea Gibbs Alexander's actually that boy. One of my favorite things about this game is after he hit the game winner, he's dapping up his teammates, he's pointing, whatever. And while he's celebrating, he finds the three referees at the scores table and dapped them up too. And uh, he had 14 free throw attempts today. <laughs> he's like, hey, I know I do my thing, but y'all got to actually blow, blow the whistle for me to get there. Uh, so he ended up spoiling Damian Lillard's big night. LaMelo Ball is back. And in the games he has been back, he's been, he's been good. 23 seven and a half three rebounds 
He didn't, even though today he didn't shoot the ball efficiently at all, he was in control of this game from start to end. He ended up with two turnovers, but like three quarters through, he didn't have any. He was making full court lobs. He was playing really good basketball, and I like to see that from him. I want to shine some light on DeMontis Sabonis and um, De'Aaron Fox in this one because if it was not for them, this game is nothing. Mostly, I, I know that De'Aaron had the 37 points, which is elite. It was mostly Sabonis because anytime Sabonis went to the floor, they fell apart offensively and defensively. So I want to give a big ups to DeMontis Sabonis, even though they ended up losing this game. Um, his defense this season has been 50 times better than any season in his career, so he deserves some praise. And the game that I wanted to watch the most today, I did not get a chance to watch a single second. So I see that JV ended up with 37 points and 18 rebounds, and CJ shot 46% from the field and ended up losing to a 42-piece Giannis. I'm going back to watch this game tonight before I go to bed because um, Giannis versus Zion had to be a show. Even though Zion only had 18 points or whatever, it had to be a show. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to tune in. I'm going to tune in.